Welcome to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is the author of the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, published by Welcome, a social worker and activist. You can like this show's fan page at www.facebook.com slash The Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Feel free to post any comments, questions, or requests for his book on the fan page. Now let's go into the studio with your host, Mr. Keenan Lake, and co-host, Marcus Select. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for another joining us for another show, the Keenan Lake Show, live and on demand here in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much for following us on Twitter and on Facebook. Keenan, how are you doing on today? Coach Follett, I'm doing well, doing well. We had a, you know, another good day to be here. Um, every day that you're above ground is a good day, so I'm, I'm blessed, Coach. I can't complain too much. How about yourself? How are things going down there where you are? Uh, things are great, coming along fine, one day at a time, one moment at a time. We're in a state of emergency, yeah. though. We're in a state of emergency. African Americans need to turn up. Midterms are coming up here in just a bit. And so much is going on in the news. But I know you got a special guest on today, author Dexter Connor. I'm going to let you do the honors, Kenan, of introducing him. Because I am elated to have Dex on the show today. Um, for those who listen to the Kenan Lake Show regularly and those who are tuning in now, uh, Dexter is an old college roommate of mine and an old friend of mine as well. So, you know, when I first... Uh, started my career in college and basketball career and uh this is my collegiate career at university of tennessee chattanooga i met a young man who uh resided from uh knoxville tennessee and you know coach you know when you when you're that young you know everybody thought that they were really cool and and all this kind of stuff and dex couldn't play a little bit i mean he he really couldn't play at all coach i don't even know how you got a scholarship to play basketball it was terrible (laughs) <laughs> but nah, Coach, Dex is my man And uh, over the years, Coach, you know Dex has grown into a husband, a father And now a published author, man So, Dex, welcome to the show <laughs> My man, Ken, listen, it's great to be on the show I appreciate it, man And, you know, I, I often reminisce about those days back in college Especially that freshman year Because you come in with a group of guys And it's, and it's real special And uh, listen, man, I'm so proud of how you've grown as well and and the book that you've got out about your father. I was fortunate enough to know him. He was a tremendous man and and a great example for all of us. So what you're doing with social work and just in the community is tremendous, man. So just much love to you on that. Appreciate it, Dex, man. So listen, man, let's get into this book, man. I I think the title of the book is um, Dear Dear Miss... Go ahead. I'm going to let you... Dear Dear Miss Educated Black Woman. Uh, in Ms. M. S. Educated Black Woman, not Miss, as in misunderstood or miseducated, but dear Miss Educated Black Woman, uh, which is a, a title of sincerity and one that speaks to the book. The book is organized in a variety of letters, um, um, and so this is just a uh, a compilation, if you will, of of my thoughts over the years of different experiences that I've had and research that I have done. I majored in uh, in graduate school in African-American studies and have spoken with, you know, women all over the country about the various challenges that women uh, have in finding romantic relationship as they ascend academically and educationally. So it's just time for us to tackle that topic and begin to do our best to strengthen relationships within the black community. That's wonderful, Dex. So let's, let's, you know, I love that title, too. But listen, when you hear that title, it can be mistaken for maybe, you know, like, is he trying to talk to the, the plight of women? Is he trying to say, you know, like, for example, and I want you to dive, and the reason I'm saying this is because I want you to dive a little bit more into the book to give us a little more about what the book is about, what it entails. Because I know you could be saying that, you know, you, you, know, you uh, educated black women don't, who don't need a man, this is how I feel, or... You know, stuff like that. So I think that some people may even take it from that. So let us know a little bit more about the book, Dex. What's going on with the book, you know, and and also after you give us a little description of the book, let us know what you've done thus far to kind of, you know, to kind of back the book and some of the things that you've done because you've you've just not got a degree in African-American studies. You've done a whole lot of work since then. So, yeah. 
Well, thank you. Well, let, as I get started, and I hate to put a, a plug right off the top, but I hope that people will purchase the book. You can get it at faithindreams.com, F-A-I-T-H-I-N-D-R-E-A-M-S.com, or you can go on Amazon and find the book there. But um, the book, uh, let me start here. My experiences with uh, black women, educated black women in general, is, is similar to most people. They value companionship and are looking for companionship. However, the realities of it of it is currently is that, you know, there's a high incarceration rate amongst black men. A lot of black men are unemployed. Um, not as many black uh, men are attending college and this sort of thing. So a lot of uh, black women um, find themselves without what they feel comparable uh, partnerships or companionship options in society. And so uh, that can be very discouraging. Um, a lot of a lot of women sometimes end up kind of compromising and, and, and settling, I guess I should say. Uh, but it's just time for us to continue that conversation. And that's what I've done through the book. So we, we just talk about a variety of things um, in the book from homosexuality uh, being kind of at the forefront right now and how that has affected the black community. Uh, we we, we uh, dive into a lot of scriptures and kind of what God says about relationships and being patient and this sort of thing. So the book, again, is is a contribution to the conversation of how we can strengthen black relationships. And as they strengthen, obviously, that strengthens the black family, and then that strengthens our children, and we can uh, be a fruitful, um, I guess, generation to come, if you will. So I'm excited to have written the book, and I look forward to comments about the book, uh, on blogs and Facebook and this sort of thing, and just really um, continuing forward with that. Coach, you got anything you want to add? By all or means, add. first tell us where we can get the book so that those that are listening uh, could avail themselves uh, to that this book called Dear Miseducated Black Woman. Tell us where we can get this book. Yeah, Amazon.com. That's the easiest way, just to go on Amazon.com and um, order a copy of the book. Uh, the book is, is fairly inexpensive. It's $7 or so on Amazon, and um, uh, that's the best way to get it. And the book is really part of a trilogy of books that will be released. Um, this one is, is focused on educated black women. And when I say educated, um, I want to be clear that that means women that are progressive in their pursuits. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have formal education, but just women who are thriving to be the best that they can be. Um, but going back to the trilogy, this is the first one. The second one will be to black men, and the third book is going to be to the black family. So we, this is just very important. I mean, our, our community in a lot of ways is in a state of emergency, and so much of who we become as a community and who we are currently stems back to the family and how black men and black women have been able to relate to each other over the years and how they have not been able to relate. So that's the foundation of the book, and um, it's kind of an exciting voyage to, to take on as you read the book. You know, I was listening, to a, re I was listening to a report. Ahead, Coach. I was listening to a report, Keenan and Dexter, about how that so, and I'm veering off uh, – topic but coming back to the center of the topic how that soy milk has growth hormones in it and should never be given to boys because it enhances feminine feminine uh, features and so as I was listening to this report I was wondering what do you think and I hate to put you on the spot are the contributing factors along with that finding that I just discovered to the growing uh, dynamic of homosexuality, particularly in the black community, which was already at risk and already in a state of emergency. Well, you know that's a that's a uh, that's a deep question, an in depth question that can be assessed from a lot of different ways. Um, obviously, homosexuality is is well within the forefront right now, and I find as it pertains to uh, relationships, kind of as it pertains to my book and black women relationships. Sometimes it's looked at as just another um, thing stealing black men away from possible companionship. But I kind of explain in the book, I do think that it is essential that as people are, and I want to be careful, but as people are uh, free to 
I guess, express who they are, then that can be a positive thing for black women. And what I mean by that is there's been a pressure over the years, I think, for men to get married and kind of have a traditional life. And then you had, you know, back in the day, Elin Harris kind of really exposed the underground of the DL brother and this kind of thing. So that's always kind of a hot topic in the black community, I think, from a um, religious perspective, but also from just a perspective of there being a lack of black men available to the black women who are looking to have a traditional family. So, um, uh, yeah, that's kind of, I guess, my my take on it. There's obviously a lot of opinions out and about about um, why it seems that more black men are coming forward now pertaining to homosexuality. There's the, the gentleman that's, I think, about to get drafted from uh, one of the SEC schools in football who's just um, who stepped forward and said that he's homosexual. Of course, uh, I think it was Jason Collins in the NBA. So right now it's, it's been um, a big time for that type of discussion. Well, I'm just, you know, Kenan, right before I turn it back over to you, I'm just a little bit concerned, as I've said on this show a, num- a number of times, that while I think our focus is in the wrong place, I do truly admit that there are people that struggle with their identity. But as I have said on my shows, that there are a lot of people that ride the bandwagon because they're following a pleasure-driven life rather than a principle-centered life. And so I just I want to come back at you with the black community is already at risk. We're already in the state of emergency. And my concern is... With homosexuality being in the forefront, we are now putting sensuality and sexuality as our first order of business when we need to get our house in order in other ways. Men, as you said earlier, are at risk of going to prison in a proportionate, a disproportionate way. They are at risk for, at risk for not graduating from high schools, not graduating from college. They're at risk for, for being arrested. In a lot of cases, we've got a lot of good men just being arrested for no apparent reason, sitting in jails a long time before they come to trial. So I'm not sure and my answer to my own question is I'm not sure that sexuality and sensuality should be the only thing that we should be discussing as a top priority culturally regarding African American men. It seems to me that some of the things that you may talk about in your book and some of the things we're going to talk about today on the show should be more of a priority than sensuality and sexuality. Your thoughts? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think sexuality and sensuality, however, will always be part of a uh, ongoing dial- dialogue because it's such a innate part of human nature. But I think as the black father has been stripped out of the, the family for a variety of reasons, whether it be prison system, simply being irresponsible, or uh, in many cases, um, the, you know, black men do not have a father in the home and this sort of thing, as we read in Kenan's book. Um, I think that creates the groundwork for a lot of other challenges that black men have in life and as we uh, enter the prison system and indulge in a lot of things that maybe we shouldn't do uh, a lot of times those things happen due to a lack of guidance so I I think the most um, the, you know the strongest conversation to be had right now with the black community is, is it seems to be the lack of leadership and the, the lack of the family structure and that starts with the father and the decisions or lack of decisions that father or black men are making in our society. That's wonderful. I've enjoyed the um, the back and forth discussion between you two. And you got, Coach, you've asked some wonderful questions. And Dex, you asked some really good questions. That was all right. So, Coach, I think we need to take a break real quick. And when we come back, we'll dive a little bit more into uh, Dear Mrs. Educated Black Woman by Dexter Connor. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Keenan Lake Show with author Dexter R. Connor and the author of the Dear Miss uh, Educated, let me make sure I got that right. Uh, I don't want to misquote it. Dear Miss Educated Black Woman, we'll have more from the author and also from Keenan Lake when we come right back from the break. Stand by. that you are enjoying the show stay right there we'll be right back after these messages
Responsible. Accountable. Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that. That's right, the new book, all the way from Asheville, North Carolina, representing the legacy of Benny Lake is Keenan Lake. The author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com or call 828-582-2261. That's 828-582-2261. My daddy taught me that. Dot com. You're listening to SRBN Radio, powered by Select USA TV. Tune in 24-7 at www.415-96radio.com. Follow us on Twitter at Select USA TV and on Facebook at www.facebook.com Select USA TV. Well, we're back here with the Keenan Lake Show live and on demand as we are talking with the author Dexter R. Connor, C-O-N-N-E-R. Go ahead on and go to Amazon and pick up your copy of the book, Dear Miss Educated Black Woman. This is the Keenan Lake Show. Keenan? Coach, so listen, um, diving back into this book by Dexter Connor. Dex, so I love, I'm loving what I'm hearing about the book so far, but, you know, a couple of questions I want to ask us, you know, and I'm going to put this out, Dex, I hope you forgive me, but Coach, uh, Dex is an actor as well. You know, he's, he's appeared in several movies. Uh, Sweet Home Alabama is one of the, the major ones that I've seen him in. But he has a, been in a couple of other movies and has done a lot uh, in that industry. So, Dex, you know, kind of leading up to the book, is there, because once you hear, when you think about, you know, African-American women, you're right. The stereotypes is that, you know, there's not enough men for African-American women. African-American men, women are more educated or have more of an education than uh, their counterparts. It's, it's not easy to communicate with black men when you're more educated stuff like that you start to hear all these types of stereotypes so when you were in that you know that part of your life the acting state of your life did you see a lot of single educated black women who really just had no men because you know here in Asheville you know you see you know we do have it's not like we don't have educated black women here but I guess it's more it may be more prevalent in other areas maybe even in a in an Atlanta area you know stuff like that you might see a lot of African-American women who can't find mates, but, you know, I wanted to try to dive into that a little bit more, Dex. Well, you know, this conversation uh, for me really began in college, Keenan, when, we when we were at UTC and I was traveling down to, to visit my, who was my, who was, who was my future wife, uh, Jackie Connor. Um, and I used to speak with a lot of the women there at Spelman College who, and I, and I speak a bit, a bit about this in the book, but they were very educated, very beautiful, and definitely on their way to great things in terms of a career. But there's always this question about the men that may be available that were, to some degree, at their level uh, for companionship and family. And, of course, more houses across the street, but that created a different dynamic because, you know, that's a male school, this is a female school, and they weren't interacting on a daily basis in a way that you do at a co-ed school. So that's where the 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 um, conversation began for me, and it has continued over the years. I got married, you know, three or four years after college, but a lot of my female friends did not, a lot of my wife's female friends did not, and they were constantly in pursuit of positive companionship. And it becomes difficult after you leave a college atmosphere where you may have um, viable options all around to go into the workplace where you, now you have the routine of life and you're not, not meeting people. Uh, you know, very interesting, a, a lady wrote a book not long ago called Mary Smart, and what she says in the book is that, you know, those college years are a time in which, and this is, this is what she says, that 75% of the time that women are there, they should spend that time looking toward companionship and dating the guys that are there and doing that sort of thing because long term that is what they're going to value out of life. Now, I'm not saying that's true and not necessarily true, but I thought it was an interesting concept and can kind of speak to possibly uh, a new way of looking at how maybe we should be teaching our young ladies to, 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 you know, just to look at possibilities and value their time at a young age. 
Um, also for me, Keenan, like you said, I've, I've kind of been in the Hollywood community, and I'm the executive producer of a compilation gospel CD called Preach. And those CDs feature top uh, pastors from around the country, sermons, as well as gospel music. And the first few that were released were focused on relationships. And those CDs did very well. They're sold in Walmart and Amazon around the country and in ver through various vendors. But they spoke to black women in particular about relationships. So those, those CDs reached billboards, music charts, and all kind of things. But that's kind of what gave me the idea and, and showed me that there's still such a need to speak on this topic, and that kind of helped evolve into the book, Dear Miss Educated Black Woman, as, as well. You know, I was going to ask a question about the uh, <clears throat> the comment that you made about the young lady, and that is, Kenan, and this is to both of you, why wouldn't young ladies who are in a positive environment, because to me that's what college has been for, for those that ha have attended college, why wouldn't they find uh, satisfying, positive, long-term partners from the college environment? What's that about? Well, Kenan, if you don't mind, I'll dive into that first. I think yeah, currently we we have a society and a community, and it's, I think it's very natural where we're teaching um, young people to grow up and be be uh, realized and and to be able to take care of themselves. So I think we naturally teach our daughters that you, you know you can't necessarily depend on someone else to provide for you and this sort of thing. I think some of that is out of fear and some of that is out of the reality of being prepared for life no matter what's thrown at you. So I think we're teaching that and so you have a lot of women who go into a college environment or whatnot that are focused on education and taking care of business and, and things like that. But I think there's no doubt that's a key time in life in which you can mingle and meet a lot of gentlemen that could be uh, potential mates or, you know, create the kind of life that you help create the kind of life that you're looking for. What do you think, Ken? Well, Dex, I think you kind of hit the, the nail right on the head. I think, you know, I think too, though, I think you both, Coach, you and uh, Dex said it uh, in the previous, com uh, previous conversation about the home. And I think that when you have, you know, there was a saying, and this is kind of getting off the topic a little bit, but there's a saying that's vice versa for most, most male and female. And it talks about you know, it talks about, you know, son being able to idolize and, and, and uh, kind of have that father figure as an image, you know, to kind of grow up and be. And, Dex, you've had, you had your father. I had mine. So, Coach, you've had your father. So, you know, we're three men on the phone right now, you know, doing this show who have been raised by our fathers. You know, the same thing can be said for women. You know, women need to have that, that male companionship, that male father figure in the home as well. You know, it talks about when you, when you look for a mate. You know, women, you look for a mate, you need to make sure you find a man who's had a father figure in his life. That way you can have, he can have some kind of aspiration and you can have that type of uh, love in your life that this man is known from a father figure. Well, the same thing can be said for, for women as well. You need to make sure when you look for a woman, you know, she's had a father figure in her life so she'll know. Because, you know, kind of what you see, you know, and again, this is getting a little away from the question and the topic, but what you see is, you know, women who have not had father figures, they seek that male attention. You know, they seek and kind of go overboard. But to answer your question, Coach, I think Dex hit the nail right on the head. When you're, um, when you're, when you're in college, that's going to be some of the most viable years. Like Dex, you know, he, he said it perfectly. You're going to be able to meet men on your level, people who are on your level at that time. So why not spend those years, spend that time building companionships, building relationships so you can, you know, possibly be able to have a, a, a wife or, you know, excuse me, a husband and a family towards the end of that. Yeah, Dexter's right. It goes back, both of you guys are right, it goes back to the home and with the focus on being an independent woman, respectively, and that is to be honored and respected, I think that women sometimes forget that there's a dual focus, that when you're in a positive environment such as college, by all means, that is the perfect place to create lifelong friends. But Dexter, the follow-up question that I was going to ask is this. According to your studies, according to your research, according to your book, and according to your speaking around the country, even around the world, what are the inroads therein for women, single women, to begin to relate to men? 
first of all, I hear a lot of people say, well, it's about where you meet men. I hear other people saying, well, you got to, as Kenan just said, meet someone with your, fa- with your father in mind. And Kenan, we know that a lot of women didn't have a father. So, Dexter, what are some general, maybe, but also specific inroads into relating to men and beginning to make some friendships that could serve as potential lifelong relationships? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think so much of attracting the type of man that you're looking for is is first being a positive spirit yourself, being person that uh, uh, developing yourself to the to the point where you're an attractive individual, and I don't mean that just from a physical standpoint. I mean inside and out, where you're secure with what you're doing, you're continuously bettering yourself through reading the Word of God and and just developing as a person because it's easy to get bitter when you don't get what you want out of life or you know it doesn't offer you what you feel like you deserve but in order to tra- attract that in which you want you have to be that in which you want to attract you know so um you know the average marriage age for black people in general is into the 30s and by that time a lot of women have accumulated not only an education, but a lot of material goods, they're living a fabulous life and this kind of thing, and they feel like they deserve a man on that level. And I, and I don't, you know, I don't question that. But like you said, the question becomes, how do I attract that kind of man? Uh, and I think it's through referrals. I think it's presenting yourself in a positive manner, having a po- positive attitude, and understanding the context in which you meet a guy. You know, if you meet him at the club, then that can be different than meeting him at the church, possibly, you know, but just making sure as you meet a gentleman that um, you're beginning that relationship in a positive manner, um, not giving too much at first, but giving enough so that you're respected and the relationship can flourish in a positive way. Wonderful, a wonderful answer, Dex. I have one question too, Dex, and this is, might put you on the spot a little bit. It's a little... You know, this is definitely probably not in your book. Well, let me say probably not because I haven't read the book yet. But, you know, when you um, when you talk about, when we talk about, you know, like I said, women, you made a, a very valid point. You know, a lot of times, uh, and this is actually a stereotype as well, when African-American women accumulate a lot and have a, a great job, you know, the, the stereotype is that they're, you know, too arrogant or, you know, their, their nose is in the air and they don't want to deal with, you know, the African-American men that could possibly be, you know, their mate. Either that they're not financially or, or successfully stable enough for that particular woman, or, you know, they may not be on that woman's level from a financial state. So with that, you know, and this is, is, this, and this is kind of those off the topic, is that the setup? Is that what, you know, is that what the system is intended? Is that what, the, you know, for us to be in a situation where, you know, our African-American women are doing so much more than the African-American men, or at least it appears to be, that, you know, it's kind of leaving African-American women out there vulnerable, and us men are not being able to do that. And is that part of the system, Dex? And, I, like, again, I may be a little, little out of the realm of what your book is. Yeah, well, about, well you know, to, to examine the African-American um, rela- relationship <laughs> means that you have to examine the African-American experience, which takes us all the way back to slavery. And since that time, we've always had a history of broken families, women having to lead families because men have have been sold off or are busy working trying to provide. Uh, we come into a, t- a more modern time where women can ascend a bit more quickly within the corporate structure due to them not being seen as much as a threat. Uh, there's so many things to speak to as it pertains to how we've gotten to this point. Um, but naturally... Uh, you know, women would love to have a man that can provide, and um, men want to be able to provide for the woman in their life. And when that's not always the case, that can sometimes emasculate a man. Sometimes women can have egos when they uh, make more money. So a lot of times the question becomes, how do we value money, jobs, education, and how does that fit into having a Christ-centered relationship that has the ability to grow? You know, so I think it, I think that gets back to what I was speaking about earlier in terms of developing yourself in a way where you don't overly value money to where it then controls your relationship. You see, money comes and goes. Things change in relationships. So today, 
Uh, a woman may be making more than a man within a relationship. Tomorrow he may be making more than her due to the fact that maybe she lost her job or whatever, whatever happens in life. But that doesn't mean that the structure of the relationship should necessarily change, especially if you combine your lives into a formidable family and you have placed proper value on that money. Does that make sense? It makes that? a lot of sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. But listen, I want to ask both of you guys a question relating to the structure of relating, relating to the structure of relating. It just seems to me that we have the cart before the horse, culturally speaking. So I want to ask both of you, how do we bring it back? I want to say right of center or left of center to the degree that we we base our relationships based on, as, as uh, Dexter just said, based on principle and not, quote, money and pleasure. It just seems to me, now correct me if I'm wrong, I could be <laughs> way out there, but it seems like the, the, the center or the core of relating and the education thereof is the point that we're missing. Um, we're building relationships based on sensuality. We're building relationships based on, quote, unquote, booty calls. If I'm just going to put it out there like a T.I. is. We're building relationships also based on I'm in control of the relationship. And, yes, I love you, but as long as I'm in control, the relationship works. So how do we bring ourselves back, uh, uh, you know, left or right of center to the real core principles of what it means to relate? I'll answer that question first, Coach. Um, you know, Personally, I think what we have to do is get back to, you know, Dexter mentioned this other to our, our core beliefs, and that, to me, starts with Christ. You know, you can't, you can't start a relationship or have anything. You can't do nothing without him. So, first of all, making sure that you're, when you're having a relationship, making sure that you're even, evenly yoked with the person. That's, that's, that's always would be my first, you know, my first piece of advice, making sure that you find somebody that you're evenly yoked with, you know, finding someone who has the same principal core values and beliefs that you have. But then, Coach, I think, you know, we have to get to what I would like to call this, this mindset away from the world, you know, not leading with our, our, our flesh. Because when you, when you lead with your flesh, of course, you're going to have, you know, the lustful sensations. You're going to have those, those, those relationships where it's just all about being physical. But being more so uh, spiritual and having that connection from a mental and emotional stand base, to me, is uh, very important. I agree a hundred percent, Keenan. And um, in a word, I would say it goes back to parenting, because we live in a generation now with a generation that's being raised on television and the media. And when there's a lack of influence in the home from parents, then there's no choice. But or obviously, those kids and young adults will turn to the media to learn a sense of value, to learn values, and to learn how to in interact with the opposite sex. And, and the bottom line is that in most cases, television or the media um, has not done a, I don't want to say has not done a good job. Their goals are obviously different, which is to tantalize and have people to watch. But they have not taken on the responsibility of, of, of producing or providing you know, core values that help people to develop in a positive way. And quite honestly, that's not to me that that's some of their responsibility, but the, res the true responsibility falls back on the individuals that produce those children, parenting. And as parenting goes, so does the community. Exactly. That's a good, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point right there. Uh, but Ken, well, uh, I, I, wanted to ahead, ask, I wanted to ask him a, a question that we can answer after the break. We'll go a couple more minutes. And I'll give you the question now. Is the historical precedence of a race being victimized by sexuality are we still yet suffering from the pain of that that victimization? I'm talking about as a race now, not one any one people, any one sector, or any one community. But it just seems to me historically, if we were victimized sexually, if we were victimized economically, uh, though we have made great inroads, could this pain yet still be there in our race where we are perpetrating, as we talked about on this show before, the same things or, or, or the same thing. Victims t tend to perpetrate the same things that their perpetrators uh, levied upon them. So could we possibly be suffering by the same, you know what I'm saying, by the same hand that we were dealt the pain with? If that makes sense. Does that make any sense? <laughs> It, I, it I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It did. It so, made sense. So and actually, about, Coach, I'm, I'm going to take a piece of that question, too. When we return from break, 
I'm going to let Dex answer it first to give him the honor, but then I'm going to add some things to that as well. And hey, you listen to the Keenan Lake Show. Keenan is always known for getting it hot in the kitchen, and this show is enough hot. We got Dexter Connor on board. Don't forget now to get your book at Amazon. Go to Amazon and look for this fabulous book, young ladies, as well as the young man. And the title of the book is Dear Miseducated Black Woman. This is the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. We'll be right back. SIBN Radio. You're ready to share your You're message share your with message. the world. Then call 404 910 5019. That's right, call 404 910 5019. Producing your radio show on SIBN Radio. For more information, dial 404 910 5019. That's right. That's right. 404 910-510-5019 Now is the time Now Responsible Accountable Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that That's right, the new book All the way from Asheville, North Carolina Representing the legacy of Benny Lake Is Keenan Lake the author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina, and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com or call 828-582-2261. That's 828 582 2261. My daddy taught me that. Well, thank you so much for joining us right here at Keenan Lake Show on SIB in radio live and on demand. Don't forget now to follow Keenan Lake on Twitter and on Facebook. And Keenan, go ahead and give them the social media contact one more time, please, sir. Follow me on Facebook, folks. You can reach me at Keenan Lake. That's on Facebook. That's my personal Facebook. I also have two other Facebooks. One is My Daddy Taught Me That. And then the final one is the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. So all three Facebooks are available. They work. Please, if you have any questions, comments, anything, you want to contact the author, Dexter Connor. You want to contact myself, give me a, give me a shout out on Facebook. Also, Twitter, at the KL Show. And then um, don't forget the website, www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Folks, the website, I would encourage all those who are listening to take a look at the website i just had the website redone it is marvelous it's actually uh the finishing touches are being added as we speak so it should be available and uh, you can view that uh sometime this evening so please check out the new website uh see how it's uh, revamped and looking really well so again coach those are all the social media websites finally the phone number is 828-582-2261 and Dexter, before we get into that last question of the hour, uh, talk to everybody of how to follow you, con- connect with you, and all of that there. Yeah, uh, you can contact me. Uh, e- I'd love for people to email me, drconnor at faithindreams.com. So D-R-C-O-N-N-E-R at F-A-I-T-H-I-N-D-R-E-A-M-S dot com. Um, Faith and Dreams also has a Facebook page. And obviously you can get the book on Amazon titled Dear Miss Educated Black Woman. In view of the Willie Lynch letters, in view of this show, which have talked about the statistics, and as you are aware, Dexter, of where we're going, culturally speaking, as a race, my question is, given the historic precedence of our victimization, sexually speaking, the pain from which are we still suffering today? Yes or no? And your thoughts, Keenan? I think you said you were going to go first. I said I'll let Dex go first on this one. I went first on the last one, so I'll give him the opportunity to go first this time. Okay. Um, you, you know, I talk about the Willie Lynch letters a bit in the book, and um, I do think it's obviously there's some residual effect there. You know, there are tremendous strides that we've made as a community, and um, there are a lot of things that still hold us within bondage. Um, 
you know, we were tremendously victimized sexually, economically, and all of these things today bleed into black relationships. And a lot of black women and black men are still being victimized sexually and economically. And again, a lot of these things go back to parenting. When there's not a father in the home, obviously you have a higher risk of a, of a young lady being sexually abused and, or a young man. So these things are old business, but they're new business as well in terms of finding remedies to these things. Now, you know, with the black community, obviously, there was a time that we were kind of forced into unity due to segregation and those kind of things. And as, you know, as blacks have ascended or some have ascended economically, educationally, a lot of times that takes them out of the community. Um, which in a lot of ways leaves the community vulnerable, you know, and unable to fight for um, mass concerns, maybe like they were able to do at one time. So there's just a lot of politics uh, with it and a lot of things to discuss pertaining to how we can kind of get back on track with the united front and being able to push forward some agendas that can really take us to the next level. Gina? Wonderful, wonderful answer, Dex. You know, um, piggybacking off what he said, Coach, you know, when you have unaddressed things and you talk about, you know, slavery, you know, the um, the plight of just the black family, when you have uh, unaddressed issues that have not been addressed, then the problem doesn't go away. Um, you know, it's just there. And then so what happens is over the years, you know, the problem has still been there. It's just been, you know, maybe hidden or maybe underskirted or maybe forgotten about. So when you look at it from that standpoint, you know, it's like we've never gotten past that, but it's still there. It's still there. So... You know, what I think is the, the, the situation, Coach, and the, the answer is where do we go from here? And I think, you know, what I'm trying to do with my daddy taught me that, you know, what Dex is doing with, you know, not only um, dear Mrs. Educated Black Woman, but with his works as well, is being able to try to find an answer to the solution. You know, you you, you got to be able to start and say, okay, you know, let's start here and work our way up by addressing some of these things and not running from them. Putting the putting the putting it on the table, putting it in the forefront, and and talking about it, trying to do things about it instead of hiding it or running from it. You know, with with what I do in my works is this. You know, we we all know that dealing with young men, primarily young high energy African American men, and particularly in this country, with the struggles that's going on, with the systems that's set in place, with the the all the hurdles and traps that that we have to go through as a people. You know, instead of saying, okay, you know what. We're going to blame this person. We're going to blame that person. Are we going to blame society in a whole? Well, well, no, we're not. What we're going to do is X, Y, Z. You know, we're going to take onus of the situation and the problem and, and, and go from there. Yeah, and, you know, Kenan, that's what your show has been about from the start. Uh, again, I always say to you congratulations, but it was interesting enough and it was well noted that we are three men who have had fathers uh, in our lives, respectively, and so if you're listening to this program, you're getting the benefit of my father taught me that <laughs> information. Uh, exactly. So by all means, if you can pick up the book at www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com and follow uh, Keenan on Twitter. But gentlemen, our time has gone again. It seems it's just when we're getting into things and it's hot. Uh, we have to get up and go. But Dexter, go ahead on and give some closing thoughts to someone who may be listening. And they're giving every effort. They're working um, despite what some political parties may advocate, that poor folks are not uh, uh, valuing uh, the work ethics as they should to rise up. Uh, but go ahead and give some closing words to someone who may be listening who's really grinding it out. Uh, they may they may not be uh, too responsible, but they're making some efforts, but they're discouraged because they, they didn't have a model. Go ahead and give some closing words, closing thoughts uh, as we come to a closer. I appreciate it. You know, my closing thoughts would be to have faith and continue to work hard and do the best that you can to position yourself for success in life, whether that be relationships, um, whether that be on the job, economically, whatever it is you're trying to do is going to take faith. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take seeking some mentors that can speak into your life, that can help open some doors. And then when that opportunity comes, being prepared for it. So, again, preparation is key. Uh, faith in God is key. And keeping a smile on your face as you go through the process can always add to it as well. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening oh. to author Dexter Connor and Keenan Lake. Keenan, final words? Well, I just want to thank Dexter for being on the show, Dex. I'm you know, really, really glad, man. I'm really proud of what you've done, the works that you're doing and continuing to do. And, uh, you know, just to have one of my friends, man, be so successful. And, and you know, Coach, you know, you, you don't even know, man. I mean, Dex, you know, he was... Uh, he wasn't the sharpest knife in the bunch when we was at, t- at Tennessee, man. I mean, this dude came hey, a man, long hey, way. Hey, I'm, a, I'm only thinking so many of what I was cut, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he already said I couldn't play. Oh, oh now he's going to try to say that the sharpest knife in the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I was waiting, man. I, 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 was, I, was, I was waiting for that. Oh, goodness, man. No, but, I know no, it's your that... show, bro, but you know. It's going to be a little slack. Oh, man. I was waiting for it. I I had, I had to keep pushing Dex till you came out, man. You know, I, want, I want the world to know that you're this educated brother who's doing some positive things, but man, I want you to, uh, <laughs> to let them know, hey, you know I, I cut up too, man. Oh, man, we had oh, a great man. time. No, Coach. Hey. No, Coach, I really appreciate everything. And folks, you know, listen to the Keenan Lake Show. You know, this is what we do. We try to bring some of the some information to help folks out, but primarily to talk about the deep-rooted issues that are going on in society and being able to try to give insight information and just encouragement to overcome those things so you know that's what i'm grateful for coach i'm grateful for the show i'm grateful that i'm able to do that i'm grateful that i have friends and people in my life who are doing so many positive things like dexter who you know are able to do things on another basis and actually you know he's he's from the east coast too folks because he lives on the west coast he he's bringing it to you from the east coast that's right Man, we are so proud. Dexter, you're always welcome on SIBN Radio and also the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to get the book, Dear Miss Educated Black Woman. It sounds like it's a letter from an educated man, but he's concerned about all those in the pot, educated or not. And we want you to have that book at $7 plus cents on Amazon.com. And also, don't forget now to visit www. Uh, Kenan, uh, my daddy taught me that dot com for Keenan Lake. Connect with him there also on Facebook and on Twitter. My name is Marcus Salette. And until next time, take care of yourself. This has been the Keenan Lake Show live and on demand on SIBN Radio. For the Keenan Lake Show, we know you will be empowered as you consider the content shared by Mr. Keenan Lake, co-host Marcus Select, and our guests. For more information about Mr. Keenan Lake, please visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat and feel free to email us at lake at mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Books can be ordered from Mr. Lake by calling 828-582-2261. Until next time, you've been listening to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Thank you.